Hi, I'm George and I'm an engineer for Polka. Accessing such an iconic and rare car can be um, pretty challenging as they aren't just sitting around in your neighbor's garage. Sometimes you have to go to another country or travel for hours just to get a glimpse of one. One particularly difficult aspect was getting access to the engine out of the car. There's a lot of the details hidden behind body panels and frames, tubes. Capturing the intricate details and precise measurements of the original Porsche 917 requires extensive research and access to original drawings, uh, photographs and expert consultations. Other than this, understanding how the particular vehicle looked at this exact race took a lot of research, as not a lot of images were available. Ensuring accuracy is pretty challenging given that these cars are over 50 years old now, each one differing from the next, and over time they've deviated from their original specifications, changing from day to day and race to race often being repaired using parts from other vehicles, resulting in some chassis becoming amalgamation of others. Our approach to accuracy involves several key steps, starting with thorough research, access to vehicle drawings, high resolution photographs, books, consultations with Porsche experts is essential. Secondly, 3D modeling. Uh, we used advanced CAD software and LiDAR scanning of several different Porsche 917s for precise measurements. We could then create and then refine 3D printed prototypes, incorporating feedback from our experts. Where we could, we would uh, ensure moving parts such as doors, opening rear sections, steering and rolling wheels. Uh, the start of our journey begins with LiDAR scanning. This is a technology that uses laser light to measure distances and create detailed three-dimensional maps of an environment. It works by emitting laser pulses and measuring the time it takes for them to bounce back after hitting an object. Calculating the time delay, LiDAR can determine the exact distance to each point on the object's surface. This process is repeated billions of times per second, allowing the creation of a precise 3D presentation of the scanned area. Um, LiDAR is pretty commonly used in lots of different applications and you even have similar technology used in autonomous cars. The design and creation of a 1.8 scale diecast model, you will then import the scan of the data into uh, Creo, which is the program we use, and we'll create a detailed 3D model. The main material we use is a diecast metal, typically zinc alloy, and it's complemented by other things like plastic, rubber, sometimes small bits of stainless steel. Molds for casting, metal parts are pretty precisely crafted, while intricate detailing is achieved through tech like electroplating, painting, pad printing. Uh, the combination of these materials and technologies ensures that the final product is uh, really highly accurate and a durable replica of the original vehicle. create such a detailed model, there would inevitably be some tricky parts which take patience. The model was designed in a somewhat modular fashion, breaking down the complex structure into manageable sub-assemblies. This allows the enthusiast to tackle smaller, less daunting sections one at a time. We've also tried to have the vehicle come together in a similar way to the way the vehicle was built, which is why the engine's a bit of a squeeze to fit in. We also provide um, comprehensive step-by-step -step assembly instructions with clear diagrams so that even the complex parts are easy to follow. This helps the builders understand the sequence and orientation of parts. We try to use high quality, precisely manufactured parts, largely in die casts, which reduce the likelihood of fit issues and making the assembly smoother. Components are engineered to fit together pretty intuitively minimalizing the need for modifications or adjustments. Feedback is crucial for continuous improvement and no model that's created is ever perfect, but compromise has to be made in terms of detail and decoration sometimes because 
these models are built to a certain budget, otherwise costs can just spiral out of control. So we often get feedback that certain areas are slightly incorrect or don't fit together as a real vehicle would. And these are quite often done for practical reasons. And um, to incorporate feedback from customers and model builders into the design process, future models, we will analyse and evaluate all the different interactions we've had with people at different stages and then we can meet the needs of the customers and hopefully meet their expectations too.